Today on CityCast Philly, in gas stations, bars, and shops in the city, it's not uncommon to see private security guards, some openly carrying large guns. A recent investigation by the Philadelphia Inquirer found these guards don't get much training or oversight. I'm speaking with a reporter about how this Wild West scenario leads to injuries, lawsuits, and even deaths. It's Wednesday, April 3rd. I'm Laura Benchoff, filling in for Trina Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Samantha Malamed, investigative reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Welcome back to CityCast Philly. Thanks for having me. So you and your colleague, Ryan Briggs, recently wrote about the private security industry here. How hard is it to become a licensed guard in Philly? So to start off, like between 85 to 95 percent of guards are unarmed. So that is the vast majority of the industry. And it, it, t- it totally depends on what you're, where you're trying to work, who you're trying to work for, and the type of work that you're trying to do. So if you want to be an armed guard, um, you have to get a certification from the state police, Act 235 certified. It's like a 40-hour training program. You have to pass some sort of medical and psychological screening, and you have to pass a background check. And that's is if you're planning to carry a gun. And then you can carry any kind of gun you want. There's no regulation as to what type. So um, compare that to um, police officers who receive more than 1,000 hours of training. And then if you're an unarmed guard working directly for a company, like a grocery store or a bar, there's literally nothing, no regulation whatsoever. Okay, Samantha, so that's... That's how you can become a guard, but what if you want to start a private security company? So actually getting licensed is a whole other thing, and that's to actually to run an agency. You have to petition in your local court of common pleas for a license, and you have to meet a certain threshold for that. And then you're supposed to list your um, workers under your license, but... The reality is a lot of people don't bother to get this license. If you ask people in the industry, they actually have no idea what the rules are. So it's sort of a patchwork of different regulations. Interesting. So it sounds like there are regulations at the state level, some, but many people working in this industry maybe don't seek out that licensing. There are certain kinds of security guards that no licensing is required. And maybe people don't even really know what they're supposed to have or what they're supposed to do if they want to operate sort of legally in this industry. That's correct. And I would just add that the sort of wildest thing about this whole situation is that you can be denied a gun license in Philadelphia and you can be denied a private security agency license in Philadelphia and you can get your state armed guard certification. And so we have people who are describing themselves as state agents who are guarding uh, places on public streets or sidewalks carrying AR-15s or AR shotguns who are licensed by the state but don't actually have uh, licenses to carry in Philadelphia. And you you actually interviewed someone, right? I read in your story you interviewed one such security guard who had his gun license revoked but is carrying a weapon now as a private security officer. Tell me about Andre Boyer. So Andre Boyer was a former police officer who was fired by the Philadelphia Police Department and has since made a career, a second career, out of running an armed um, security company, which he, he emphasizes is not a security company because if it was a security company, he might have to have a license. He calls it a protection agency. And so he is Act 235 certified, and he has uh, handcuffs, drones, trained canines, pepper spray, tasers, and he carries an AR shotgun. And uh, he says that he can make arrests um, if he sees someone shoplifting or anything like that. And, you know, he's been basically at war with the, the Philadelphia Police and District Attorney's Office, and he's been arrested three times. 
and the cases were all dropped, but one of the cases he he was charged with assault after stunning a person with a taser during a citizen's arrest. Okay. So he was arrested for things he did while working as a security guard. In in that one case, yeah. And there was another case too, um, where one of Foyer staff had someone had thrown rocks at at the security guard and he ended up shooting at that person with with I think an AR fifteen. So no one was was injured, and and the person who threw the rocks did end up getting charged, I think, and not the officer. But you can see how this is really setting up a potentially dangerous and escalating dynamic. More on this story after the break. This is CityCast Philly. Okay, Samantha, we talked a lot about the ways the laws governing private security work or don't work in Pennsylvania and Philly. But I wanted to get more into some of the consequences of having this system. I was struck when reading your article by just how many different kinds of examples you had of things going wrong. Can you tell me some of the stories of people you spoke with or who you read about who have been hurt by private security guards? So the person who actually started me on this was a guy named William Grant, who absolutely loves the floral service at this one shop, right? And he goes there. He used to go there religiously for Mother's Day. I think he went for Valentine's Day and for his wife's birthday. And the last time he went there was Mother's Day 2022. And he was walking out with his flowers and the security guard tried to stop him. And the security guard didn't think he had paid for the flowers, which he had. And the security guard ended up stabbing him. Oh and God. he was pretty seriously injured. And it turned out that, this, that the guard had a pretty lengthy criminal record, including for assaultive conduct. And instead of firing him, the supermarket actually hired a defense lawyer for him to try to beat the charges, which was not successful. They didn't respond to me, to my request for comment, and neither did uh, the security guard who had committed that assault, who is now um, sentenced to three to six years in prison. But, I mean, to me, what that case showed is that, you know, especially when someone's working, like, directly for a store or other company, there's just really no regulation, and the only consequence is civil liability. The other case that really stuck out to me was this company Mainline Private Security because there have been at least 11 times since 2018 where people who were at Philadelphia bars sued them and said that they had choked them to the point of being unconscious, that they sucker punched a man, leaving him with a concussion and fractured tooth. There was a man who was quadriplegic and in a wheelchair who said the security staff from Mainline had threw him out of his wheelchair and beat him. And, oh and of my course, God. yeah, and of course, more most infamously, Eric Pope, who was a 41-year-old man who was at Taboo in uh, the neighborhood, was uh, fatally beaten. Mm-hmm. So now we have this company that they still have their license. They've had three people criminally charged who worked for them for assault while on the job. So I think, you know, like here's a situation where you have to ask, where are the regulators? Where is the enforcement? Right. If a company can be sued that many times. On the flip side, though, I mean, being a private security guard is dangerous work as well. I think we all remember that a security guard at Macy's in Center City was killed last year after having confronted someone who had attempted to shoplift, you know, what are some of the risks for guards in this system? Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned at the top, something like 85 to 95 percent of guards are entirely unarmed. And often they're, you know, working for these big companies like Allied Universal, which says it's the seventh largest employer in the world. And they get, according to lawsuits they filed, they get one week of training and no equipment. And, Hmm. you know, some of these situations that happen, like Eric Harrison, who was killed at Macy's, there was a young woman who was 19 years old, 
a Temple University student who sued Allied saying that she was uh, posted alone at a parking garage and ended up being sexually assaulted while on the job there. That's so awful. Yeah, I mean, they're like really, it, it is a really dangerous job. And I think the the question is, could a minimum level of training and, you know, like more regulation of this industry protect both people who are working in it and the public? Right. Another thing that struck me from your reporting is that public entities too, like SEPTA, our transit authority, are now hiring private guards. This is a part of their budget um, when they perhaps have issues filling more official police officer roles. And I'm just curious what the consequences of that are. Can you tell me a little bit about how private security officers work with public entities? I mean, to me, this is a case where we have a citywide hiring crisis. You know, you have agencies like police with like 20% vacancy rate, prisons with like a 45% vacancy rate, and, you know, agencies everywhere in between. And so I don't think that they like to acknowledge it, but I think the turn to private security is probably filling a lot of those basic sort of keeping the wheels turning roles. And I, and I don't know that it's really meeting the challenge. I mean, there are definitely lawsuits from people who were assaulted on SEPTA platforms who said that the guards didn't do anything or perhaps even created the dangerous situation that they were in. I spoke to a security guard who worked outside one of the homeless shelters on Kensington Avenue who just described you know, basically giving overdose reversing drugs all day long. It's good that somebody was there to do it, but it's not really what you would think is like the role of a contract security guard. So this all sounds just very chaotic, but Samantha, I know in your reporting, you spoke to a lot of experts about how the private security industry in Pennsylvania and Philly could be licensed more smoothly more consistently, what did they tell you about what should or could change here? So, I mean, first and foremost, people argue that there should be a statewide licensing board. That's something that exists for something like 250 professions in Pennsylvania already. Barbers have to be licensed and get 1,250 hours of training. So that should offer some point of comparison. They say, obviously, minimum training, um, transparency in the licensing process, and also insurance requirements, since the reality is that when something goes wrong, it's ultimately going to come down to uh, whatever insurance people have to remedy it. The last thing, of course, is that any rules need to be enforced and clearly enforceable. Mm -hmm. Right now, because the licensing is happening county by county, I think even law enforcement doesn't have that much clarity all the time over whether they have jurisdiction and who has jurisdiction over these armed guards. So any rules that that are created obviously need clear path to enforcement. Is anyone taking up this cause to sort out this system? Has there been any momentum or movement from elected officials to try to clarify these regulations or enforce them? So the Pennsylvania Association of Licensed Investigators, which is a trade group, is trying to develop draft legislation to float to lawmakers. But I think that there is a sense that Harrisburg is perhaps not the most functional (laughs) right now and that, you know, there's not a sense of particular urgency about it, not because the reforms aren't needed, but because... I think people just don't feel hopeful that they'll be able to see results. All right. Samantha Malamed, investigative reporter at the Philadelphia Inquirer. Thanks for being here and thanks for your reporting. Thank you. We'll have a link to Samantha's full story in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the wild west of licensing for security guards, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter. 
Hey Philly to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye.